Talking about being different. Talking about being different. I also want to defend somebody else who I feel like is getting a lot of unfair criticism and getting a lot of stick from the outsiders and from people that aren't professionals and from civilians and regular people who don't respect the art. Bitch, you guessed it. I want to defend Joe Rogan. A part of me feels like this hate train going on with Joe Rogan at the moment. Everybody's saying his special on Netflix is boring. This particular article cuts of the spectator that says Rogan's special was about as edgy as a Banksy. I feel like all of this hate that's been pointed towards Rogan is a bit misplaced. You know why? Because I don't think anybody that's successful at what they do or successful in life has to be good at what they do. It's not a prerequisite. This whole idea that, you know, life is a, meritor is a meritocracy is, is, you know, it's been proven to be incorrect. When you have people like Dark Side Phil and Boogie and Wings of Redemption making a good salary streaming and making content online, you know, number one, <coughs> meritocracy d doesn't exist. And number two, and number two, karma isn't real. Because all three of those guys are horrible individuals who have done terrible things throughout the years who should have no right to be making the money they're doing online. They should be shaking their tin cup somewhere on the street somewhere. But no, here they are. With I think all three own their own homes and shit. Right? All three are married and shit. Or have women in their lives. In Boogie, Wings and DSP. So if that's the case, it proves to me that the whole thing about, oh, you have to be good at what you do. How's this guy so successful? How's he so big but he's terrible at what he does? Bitch, that's the whole point of life. You're meant to figure out a way for yourself to get the most out of life without actually having to do anything to get it. That's the main goal. The main goal is how can I get more out of life without having to work hard at what I want or without having to, you know, be the best at what I do. And Rogan maybe has discovered it. Maybe Rogan saw it early on. Let's let's use this podcast platform as a chance to speak to, speak to interesting people make it the best podcast in the world, the most followed podcast in the world, and then when I want to start doing stand-up, guess who's going to be there? I bet you guess it. It's not that hard. Maybe that's, maybe that's always been the point. It's never been about, oh, how good are you? How funny are you? No, it's always been about, I am one of the most popular people person in the world. I've got a popping podcast. Everyone wants, to, everyone wants to know me. Everyone wants to be my friend. Cool. I'm going to take this and then segue into the comedy. Maybe that's the plan. And maybe that's a good approach to do about things. Who knows? Let's go through the article. The article says as follows. My resolution this summer was to see how far in the Olympics I could get without watching an event. It's harder than you think. Especially when you've got kids calling constantly from the sitting room. Dad, dad, it's Romania v. Berg, Burkina Faso in the finals of women's beach volleyball. There's been a tremendous upset. I jest. I actually do know that uh, I actually do know what happened in the finals of the women's beach volleyball. It was the first thing I wanted to do. Blah, blah, blah. What are you saying? Sorry, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, what, what's Binga, Binga saying? <laughs> Blisting analysis. Okay, thank you. I will take it. Um, I just I actually do know what happened. It was the first thing I watched because it was what I was on. I was in a room. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, later, I briefly. Where's the fucking thing? It's talking too much here, man. It's waffling here. Okay. The Olympics was a good time for all the networks to bury bad TV. Maybe it's maybe that's why Netflix chose. Sorry, what? The Olympics was a presumably a good time for networks to bury bad TV. Maybe that's why Netflix chose to release Joe Rogan's special, alleged comedy special, right in the middle. Rogan is a former U.S. sports commentator, mixed martial arts, who has somehow managed to parlay his minor celebrity and blandly amiable jockiness into a multi-gazillion dollar career as the world's biggest podcaster. But labeling him a stand-up comedian, I would suggest, is as implausibility too far. <laughs> is an implausibility too far. Labeling him a stand-up comedian, I would suggest, is an implausibility too far. Rogan is marketed as a kind of edgy alternative to the mainstream media. In reality, he is about as edgy as a Banksy. Explanation for the American readers, not very. But he does his best. For example, 
when he had Elon Musk on his intimidable podcast, his longest one, uh, his longest lasted five hours and 90 minutes, they famously shared a joint. I mean, it's legal, right? Said Musk as he took the proffered re reefer. Sorry, as he took the as, as he preferred the reefer or preferred the reefer. And there's your problem right there. Yes. Maybe back in the Ronald Reagan 1980s, when it was on your third offense, it could have been landed you an automatic 25 year sentence. But in 2024, you must be kidding. Marijuana smoking is ubiquitous. Blah, blah, blah. Still, he knows how to please his crowd. The first part of his comedy set um, for the Majestic Theater in San Antonio was dedicated to how amazingly blessed he felt to live in Texas. Texas. How Texans were truly the most wonderful people in the world and none more wonderful than the ones who paid or perhaps been paid, who knows, to see Rogan live at the Majestic Theater San Antonio. This went down well. Yo, people think Rogan is so unfunny that he's paying people to go and see his shows. <laughs> he's got a company that hires like people just to sit in the crowd and laugh. Oh my god, bro. That's amazing. That's such a brutal, brutal lads of somebody. I think you're unfunny. I think you're so unfunny. I think the people in the crowd aren't even real. I think they're all paid actors. It's like what? <laughs> um after that. He could read extracts from a big bumper compad, um, comp compendium, compendium, compendium. Why can't I say the word compendium? Compendium of old jokes still have been treated like a world's funniest man. Indeed, it was pretty much what he did. One minute he was riffing on the subject of aliens and the apparent fascination with the intimate um, personal investigations on humans, which South Park dealt with in 1997 in his very first episode titled Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. The next, he was recycled an old Join Rivers gag um, about Michelle Obama, then swiftly retracting in, in a case, heaven forbid, anyone thought he was being serious. Stick to the podcast show. Yo, this article is a, this article is accusing Joe of joke free free. Not only of stealing a joke from South Park, but also stealing a joke from Joan Rivers. Fucking hell. I know I know people are suggesting now that Brent so he stole a joke from Brendan Shaw. But this is crazy. Continues. For times like these, telly is always thin in, in August. What you really need is Mubi. It's a subscription channel that... Okay, cool. Are we? Is that what we're going to wear? Is, that how it, is this how it ends? You can be sure Joe Rogan won't be watched on any of them. Anyway, cool. So, this person wasn't a big fan of Rogan. I think Rogan deserves some support. I don't think anybody that does anything online, does anything in a minimal way, is good at what they do. They just figured out a hack. That's what you have to remember. Nobody out there is good at what they do. Everyone just figured out a hack. People got in there early. People got lucky. Whatever the reason is, they got there. But for you to think that everybody is there by merit is fucking utterly ridiculous. Just enjoy or don't enjoy what they do and keep it moving. But I think the hate train I think the hate train against Rogan must end and must come to a stop. And if I have to be the person who sacrifices myself to pretend that Rogan's, you know, special is funny, just to appease, my, just to appease himself and protect him for the baying mob, I will do so. Because all these other people, like his friends and shit, all the friends that he's given careers to on a legit silver platter, all these friends he's literally had on the podcast and changed their lives, all those guys, guess what they're not doing? They're not running for cover for Joe, but they should be. They should be running for cover. Run, running to cover him at all costs. At all costs. All costs. Because the things he's done for them is undeniable. Especially post-fucking jail. Like, come on, man. Come on. All these motherfuckers are not even being thankful. They're not even lying about the special being good. They're, like, choosing their words carefully. Or, oh, 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 it's like, bro, no, 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 no. You don't, get you don't get time to do that now. You don't get time to do that now. Either you're the friend or, you're the friend or the foe. Well, one or the other. That's what I say. That's what I say.